An Introduction to Epidemiology. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to understand the definition and history of epidemiology and relate John Snow's work and methods to how epidemiology is used in public health today. The word epidemic was first coined by Hippocrates in the first century BC. Um, and until probably the 20th century, epidemics and epidemiology referred to infectious diseases. In the 1850s, there was an epidemiological society in London. Nowadays, the word epidemiology encompasses other diseases, not only infectious diseases, such as cancer and conditions such as myopia. Um, a final definition was given for epidemiology in 1983, and to read this, it means the study of the distribution and determinants of health-related states or events in a specified population and the application of this study to control of health problems. Epidemiology is concerned with health-related events and outcomes that occur in a population. The epidemiologist is interested in the distribution of disease or other health conditions in a population. Epidemiological studies are concerned with the people who get a disease or health condition, with the people who do not get it, and with how these two groups differ. Understanding these determinants helps epidemiologists to address the situation through public health or clinical measures. The wider purpose of epidemiology is to obtain, interpret and use health information to reduce illness and disability, as well as promoting health and well-being. The father of modern epidemiology is John Snow, a British physician and surgeon who was born 200 years ago in 1813. He is best known for his careful work identifying the source of the 1854 cholera outbreak. This was in the Soho area of central London. During the 19th century, London became the greatest city in the world and its population grew from 1 to 6 million. As well as great wealth, there was severe poverty, with people living in overcrowded and unsanitary slum conditions. Many poor families lived in a single room. Drinking water was taken directly from the River Thames and, for most of the 19th century, there was no sewage system. Cholera first reached Britain in 1831 and London in 1832, where the number of deaths were greatest among the slum dwellers due to poor sanitation. The second great cholera epidemic in London was in 1848. This map from an official report of the time shows where cholera deaths were concentrated in the city. In the mid-19th century, cholera was assumed to be airborne and contracted by breathing through the mouth. John Snow did not agree with this and proposed instead that cholera was transmitted by contaminated water. When cholera returned to London in 1853, Snow noticed the high number of deaths in a particular area of South London. To test his theory that cholera was a waterborne disease, Snow compared the deaths in the area to the source of the water supply. In this area, water was supplied by two companies and residents could choose their supplier. Snow found that the death rate was many times higher in households supplied by one water company than the other. This excess in mortality could be attributed to cholera deaths and so Snow concluded that the disease was spread by contaminated water. It turned out that one water company had clean water as it had moved its water source upriver above the area where the River Thames was contaminated by sewage. While Snow worked on this study, another cholera epidemic began near his home in Soho. It led to more than 550 deaths in two weeks. Snow mapped the location of deaths in the area compared to the water sources. He also interviewed Soho residents about where they got their water from. Analyzing his data, he identified that those who had contracted cholera had all drunk water from one specific source. This was the pump on Broad, now Broadwick, Street, which Snow believed had been contaminated with infected sewage. Snow persuaded the local council to remove the handle of this pump so it could not be used. 
This interrupted the route of infection for cholera. Today, a replica pump without a handle stands in Soho on Broadwick Street as a memorial to Jon Snow and the cholera epidemic. These two seminal pieces of research by Snow disproved the popular theory that cholera was an airborne disease and demonstrated the practical application of epidemiology to solve a health problem. John Snow is known as the father of modern epidemiology and his careful methods are still used. First of all, he started off with a hypothesis and his hypothesis was that cholera was a waterborne disease. The current opinion was then that it was airborne. Next, he had to set out to collect data on this topic. So he collected data on cholera deaths and where this water for the, that these people consumed was collected from. Um, he then wanted to show an association between the cholera deaths and a certain source of water. From this information that he had, he then was able to apply the results. That was, there was one water source that was associated with cholera deaths and he persuaded the local council to remove the pump handle of the well of the pump from where the water was collected, thereby interrupting the source of contamination. In summary, epidemiology describes the magnitude, distributions and determinants of diseases affecting a population and it provides scientific evidence for public health policy decisions for the prevention of disease.